For most of us, it's a very long time indeed since we had real inside knowledge of life at a primary school. On the outside, we see children arriving in their various ways. Outside, too, we see them given responsibility. But as to what goes on inside there today, we have many of us little more idea than has a five-year-old new boy arriving with his mother to meet the world outside his home. It's an important day for his mother too. Having a young schoolboy in the family is going to mean a change in the household routine. This beginner's class starts with what is called a developmental period. The children dive into whichever activity they find most attractive. It gets them limbered up for more formal work during the rest of the day. This is what he knew he had to do to his wee puppy. Next door to the beginners are the children who've been at school six or eight months. Are you watching? Good for you. Under Miss Hamlin's care, they're already doing real stories. Pat, Mary. See my new puppy. I must be good to it. Good girl, Mary. That was lovely. Would you like a stamp to you? Play. Good, there we are. I wonder what that one is. Let's see if we can all do it very nicely. Are you ready? Off we go. See my new puppy. The class is sorted out into small groups, while one lot occupy the board with reading and writing, another is doing artwork and so on. Moving from group to group, the teacher can give adequate individual attention. One thing to be said for the twins here is that at least they draw different pictures. While the twins get encouragement, the group Mary is in carries on with an exercise on the puppy story. This writing is a very serious business. Although it involves teachers in extra preparation, working a class in groups makes teaching more efficient. In Form 2 at another school, Hastings Intermediate, Miss Pedersen starts an arithmetic period by explaining to the whole form the use of a decimal box. When the class is rearranged into groups for a time, the lightweight chairs and desks make it a simple operation. While the teacher takes one group, small enough for individual attention, the others get on with their own inquiries into this practical subject. We use decimals and percentages in our daily lives. We use it in rates, in weather readings, and in rain readings. So far this year, June has been the wettest month. We had 5.14 inches of rain. Any questions? Yes, Max? Vernon, what then would be the daily average for June? You'd have to divide 5.14 by the number of days in June. Thanks. Here's a, another way we use decimals in our daily lives. This is a car speedometer. The teacher is never far away should help or supervision be needed. Another benefit of grouping is that pupils who learn fast are not held back with the slower ones, but develop speed and confidence. The alternation of group work and class teaching is the normal pattern in any of today's primary schools. Going ahead at their own pace, the most advanced group is doing book exercises. Members are encouraged to help one another. Next, Mahora School, which is one of the older ones. Though the grounds are beautifully kept, the building is not as light and airy as schools now being built. But then, after all, not every school can be brand new. Though group work is not as easily carried out here as in more modern buildings, Mr. Moisley still finds the system very useful. We had a very something piece of meat for dinner last night. David. The word is tough. T-O-U-G-H. Using new words in context. I saw the girl sobbing as she tried to leap over the puddle. Barbara, the word is stumble. 
S-T-U-M-B-L-E. The girl that was going to the market had a something of clothes under her arm. Sewing. Bundle. B-U-N-D-L-E. The man started to... Just a sample. minute, Sewing, just a minute. You must speak up louder. These people over here can't hear you. All right, hold your head up, uh, Sewing, and try that again. The man started to something when he fell into the stream. That's better. Better, Andrew? That's very much better, sir. Good. The teacher goes on to another group. There's no time for boredom in this classroom. Each time new words are introduced, before going into notebooks, they are spoken aloud several times, then written in the air while the letters are spoken. The spelling is impressed on the memory. Groups go back to regular places in a matter of seconds for the teacher to take them in a class lesson again. Interest never flags. Good organization gets the work done at Mahora. But in the many modern buildings, such as this one, with up-to-date equipment, the work is made easier. Much pre-planning by the Education Board is needed to cater for all the children in new housing and industrial areas. Onakawa School, built in 1954 with 110 pupils, now has four times as many, needing a total of 12 classrooms. Growth has been even more rapid at Marainui. Two years ago, four classrooms were adequate. Now the builders are completing eight more. Expert outside help is sometimes called on. This is a four-year-old tree just coming into bearing. First, you must cut out the strong, sappy wood to allow the sunlight through. Then you must cut out about half of this young growth, otherwise the tree would carry too much fruit this year. That also allows enough shoots for next season's crop. Now, are there any questions? Mr Davies, how much fruit would you get of a four-year-old peach tree? Around about half a bushel. And how many peaches would you expect to get from a fully grown tree? Well, on an average, about oh, seven bushels a year. This social studies group is from Munga Territory School. This is the framework of the tree. Now I'm going to cut off these young shoots down below. Like this. Now I'm going to leave a leader unpruned for you to take back to your class. When back from the field, each social studies group reports and demonstrates to the whole class, and members have to be prepared to answer questions. Manga Territory is predominantly a Maori school. Country jobs as well as city ones call for a high educational standard, and at 13 or 14, these children will go on to nearby secondary schools. The organization of small, isolated country schools, such as Mangatahi, has to take into account that while there are not many children, there is still a full range of ages and classes to be taught, all to be housed in one or two classrooms. Book parcels arrive regularly from the country library service. Current affairs in the outside world are talked about after readings from press cuttings. An increase of 1.85% on last year's. The most populous sheep district in the North Island remains Hawke's Bay. The biggest increase was at Great Barrier Island. Can anybody tell me why the sheep population is increasing, especially in Hawke's Bay? Yes, John. Because of the scrub clearing. Good. Any other reason? Robert? Because of the fertilising done by aerial top dressing. Good. Thank you, Marilyn. Now carry on, Robert. Russia today seemed to rock about 8,000 miles from the Soviet Union to the Central Pacific. The nose cone landed close to the target. The teacher, Mr Delaney, keeps moving from class to class. Running a sole charge or two-teacher school is a real test of teaching ability. Here a story in the school journal is being correlated with the atlas. The dictionary also comes into play, while over in the corner... Just what I'll do then, Burr Rabbit, this will teach. You, Burr Fox picks up Burr Rabbit and the Tar Baby 
and throws them right into the middle of the blackberry bush. Thank you, Brer Fox. That was just what I wanted. I was born and brought up in a blackberry bush. Try again another day, Brer Fox. Goodbye. That's quite good, Standard One. Who would like to act it tomorrow? Good. In Hawke's Bay, as in other districts, when the teaching day is over, many a country schoolmaster still has his deliveries to do, taking the children home. Across miles and miles of hill country go the school buses, through a land made prosperous by sheep and cattle. In city, town and country, a full day's work at school is over. The last of the children are on their way back to the remotest homes, taking with them a day's more knowledge of the world they must enter in only a few years' time as educated and responsible citizens.